Hi everybody, this is Chris Schmidt back with the next part of the signal training video. So in this video we're going to be talking about all the, a bunch of the other modifiers. We just covered noise, and now we're going to talk about some of the other ones. So we're still in the scene. Uh, we did the setup in the previous one. If you uh, didn't follow, it's just a tracer object that is tracing a line and moving to the right so you can we can kind of get feedback. So you can see if I grab this cube and I physically move it up and down, we're kind of getting, getting a constant feedback of what motion it did. It's just a good way of visualizing what what signal's doing for us. So uh, why don't we go ahead and click on our cube, add a new signal tag, and once again, we're, gonna, we're just gonna keep it simple by driving the Y parameter, because it's nice and easy to see. So I drop that on to signal, it changes to P for position, and now on the base tab, we don't wanna change anything there, it should just stay static, we're gonna add a modifier. So we're just gonna go through all of these uh, modifiers here. We're gonna go through sine, cosine, sawtooth, square, triangle, and bounce. So I'm gonna click on sine, and it automatically makes a new tab, new dynamic sign tab. And let's go ahead and set this to some amount. Uh, it defaults to a value which is 50% uh, of what it was already set to. Uh, that's not what we want though. Let's do uh, 500. So what this is going to do is every 90 frames, it is going to go up 500 and down 500. So I'm just going to hit play. And we can see it traveling nice and smoothly up and down in the sine wave. So what do we want to do with it? Uh, well, I mean, there's not that many settings when it comes to uh, th these other ones. They're really straightforward. So uh, we could change how much it's moving up and down. So change it to like 1,000. It's going up and down twice as far. We can change the... Uh... Oops, I did too many times. We can change how fast it's doing this. So we can set this to 45 degrees for loop point, And now it's going to travel twice as fast. And we can go really fast, like 10. And now it's going to be traveling up and down really quickly. And just because it has to get subdivided in the frames, we're actually going to start seeing that level off a little bit so it doesn't look quite as smooth but it's still moving just as smoothly and as you know with as many frames as you're uh, running um let's see uh, let's put that back up to say 45 and then we have time offset uh and to show that one i'm going to copy this tag to the cone and like i said in the last one the cone's going to jump up to where the cube is because we just copied those the y position to it so we just have to grab our base and pull the y or the uh pull this cone down so i see they're both doing the exact same thing so I can grab the cone, grab the cone version, and uh, let's do a little time offset. Let's just offset it by five frames. So now you see they're doing the same motion, but the cone is doing it five frames after. And we can do negative, and it will be ahead. And we can do that by any amount. But so that's uh, that's all pretty straightforward, I think. I'm going to delete that off. We just need the cube. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the advanced tab. The advanced tab, and you can see that we actually have 900 frames here, and even though we're looping 45, it'll go forever. So uh, let's talk about the advanced tab. So inside the sign, and this is going to apply to all of them, we have the strength mode. And right now it's being told to apply full power all the time. So what we could do is animate the strength slider, and then have it like maybe change over time to how strong it is, but we can actually do that automatically, parametrically, through strength mode. So instead of it being full power all the time, we could say from, let's say from zero to 300, it's gonna be at full power and then slowly drain out. So if I rewind all the way and hit play, we get a nice motion up and down, but as time goes by and we get closer to 300, you see it's not going up quite as high and now we're fading out to, when we get to 300, completely nothing. So in strength mode, we got a, a bunch of different presets. We got fade up, Fade down, fade, ease in, ease out, and then ease in and out. So in this particular circumstance, at the beginning, um, it won't be moving at all. It's at zero. And then over time, as we get closer to 300, it'll go to full power. So we don't really need to uh, see this again. Um, but let's do something a little different. Let's try going from zero to 90. And right now it plays through once. So what that means is we get nothing. And then as we get to 90 frames, it's at full power and it'll stay at full power forever. Uh, it'll just continue where it left off, which was at full. But we could do something like loop. So now what will happen, it might look a little weird. There might be like a harsh uh, jump at a certain point. But what's happening is every 90 frames, it's starting out with no power, jumping up to a full power, and then dropping down again. Now we could see this maybe a little better if we set our main loop point to something shorter, like 20. So now it should be more quickly doing sine wave. And you can see that it's accelerating in the full power, accelerating and then in, and then cuts off and then starts the cycle over again. So we're getting, 
a sine wave's strength changing over time. And then we have ping pong, which will go up and then back down again every 90 frames. So instead of a hard edge, it should go up and then back down again and then up. So the ping pong is usually going to look pretty nice. Um, if we shorten this up to maybe 45 frames and let's even speed up how quickly it's doing this, we start getting some cool little patterns going here. And this, you know, we should never see the seam and it should repeat forever. So it works really well. Um, next up, there's match timeline. Pretty straightforward. Like if I were to click this, it'll match this timeline to our current timeline, which is 0 to 900. Not necessarily what we want. Um, and that pretty much does it for the basic settings. Oh, I guess we didn't talk about positive and negative. Let's do that. So uh, we can do the positive and negative. We talk, It's the same as it was in noise, but uh, I'm going to put this back up to full power, by the way. And now we can just ignore it. So um, let's set our loop to a little slower. Okay, so right now, if we were actually to pull this power down all the way, you see that's our center point. That's zero. It's not moving. It's wherever our base is telling it to be, which right now is actually negative 80. And I'm going to zero that out. And now you see it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. So as the strength goes up, you see it's traveling above and below its origin. It goes up 500, our amount, and down 500. So uh, we can say we only want that to go positive. So I can turn off negative, And now it's doing that same sine wave, 500. But it's only going to zero up to 500. So you can see where that change happened. Uh, and then, of course, the opposite, we can turn negative back on, get rid of positive, and now it's going to go back up to zero, but always stay down in the negative. So there we go. Uh, that's all the settings here. Of course, you can change the, the name of your sine wave. We could uh, rearrange it here. And why don't we go ahead and layer a couple of these up. I'm going to turn our si uh, second sine wave back on there. Or, um, I'm sorry, positive and negative. And let's make another sine wave. I'm going to go back to base tab. I'm going to say sine again. So I'm going to get sine 2. And in this one, let's have it go a lot faster. I'm going to have this one go... Let's have this one go 15 and have this one go at 45. So, uh, how much... But this one's not doing anything yet because we don't have any variation in there. So let's not have it be too extreme. The other one's 500. Let's do 100 on this one. And now what we should get is they're going to start layering on top of each other. This, actually, this particular motion is actually looking a little weird because of the way that they're adding. Let's change our loop point to maybe 10. And we could start seeing it's these two sine waves getting added on top of each other. So as we speed, if we go to five, then now this, this sine wave is going really quickly. So you can clearly see our nice arcing sine wave for the big one. And our tiny one is doing these quick jitters back and forth. And uh, just as an example, in this particular scene, we could actually smooth that out a little if we changed our spline type to something like uh, maybe uh, Akima. And it gave it some sub points. So now you see we, those get rounded out a little more. Uh, or... Um, cubic, even smoother. So you see how that's getting uh, getting jiggled and layered up on top of each other. So it's all about layering things up. Um, so, and we could even set this down to a loop point of like, oh, two's no good, but maybe three. Yeah, three now, every three, every, you know, every couple frames, it's completely jittering up and down and we can increase our strength. And of course, we've got our final strength parameter here. So we could actually use this as a, multipl as a multiplier. So I can crank that up even further. And I didn't change our variation, I just changed how much strength it had. So you can see how these are getting layered and we start getting some really crazy looking patterns. That's pretty neat. I never made that one before. So excellent. So that is the sine wave. Let's uh let's talk about some of the other ones. Um I'm going to just do it from scratch, make a new sun, make a new signal tag. I'm gonna to go to coordinates, I'm going to drag a Y in again. And the base tab, we're not gonna change it all. We're going to go well, we're gonna change it in the fact that we're making a cosine. Uh, um, okay, so we're at cosine, and let's set this up to 500 again, and hit play. Cosine is going to look exactly like sine. It's just the exact opposite. So if I were to set that to sine, it's going to pop and do the same pattern, but inverted. So sine and cosine are very similar. All the same settings apply. We don't have to go over all of them again. But now, instead of uh, changing it by going make a new tag, why don't we just change this sine wave into the next one? Like, you can go to cosine, but let's try the next one, which should be fun, which should be sawtooth. So what Sawtooth does, and this is good for visualizing things. Oh, and let's uh, let's make this not soft anymore and go back to linear. So what's happening is it's constantly going up until it hits its loop point and then dropping back down to zero and then going up and then dropping down. Just another kind of a uh, noise pattern. If we set this to go a little faster, then we can... Well, the, the shorter our loop point, the kind of quicker it's going to travel up to its peak and then drop down again. The positive and negative still applies. The time offset still applies. 
everything can still get added on top of each other. We could say duplicate this channel and now we get two of them and then we get a tinier saw you know we can make a tinier sawtooth like this one similar thing to the sine wave let's shrink this down to like five and now we got a tiny sawtooth on top of a big one so more ways of making patterns i'm gonna go and kill this tab by hitting delete and now we just go back to sawtooth and we get this one going so what do we have next next up is square i like square it goes to the peaks. There's no in-between. Now, there will be, in this particular visual example, we'll see a transition between the two, a slight angle, but that's because the tracer had to go from one point to the other. The cube is popping from one spot to the other, so it's going up 500, negative 500, up 500, negative 500. So that's kind of fun. We could even duplicate that, and let's do the same thing. Let's make uh, this one be not so powerful, but loop a lot faster, and now we get these... Now it's like drawing a little castle. Do, 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 um, okay, so that's fun. I'm going to delete that. And what's next? So that's square. Then we have triangle. So it's kind of like sawtooth, except it smoothly goes up, smoothly goes down. It's kind of like an all-mac ping-pong at a constant rate. Sawtooth. Or, uh, that's triangle. And then bounce. Bounce is really fun. Boing, boing, boing. Uh, so that'll just bounce forever. We got, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, now one important thing maybe to mention in, uh, in bounce is... That if we're going negative, then it's kind of going below the ground. So let's say we're using our strength tab and we want this to slowly fade down from its bounce. I'm going to have it go up to 180. What's going to happen is it's slowing down, but it's slowing down via its midpoint. So we don't want that. We actually want to get rid of the negative, And if we want it jumping higher, we can set that up to 1,000. So now it's jumping on the ground. And as the strength decreases, it's jumping less and less until it finally zeroes out. And then, of course, we could set that to ping pong. And now it's going to be at full power. Bounce, 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 bounce. And that just zeroes out. Then it's going to start getting strength back. Boing, boing, boing. So you can start looping things like that. Bounce, bounce. And then it's going to lose its power again. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, that should cover it for the most part for uh, these in individual tabs. Um, we talked about... Uh, the feedback uh, in the previous one, so I think you have a good idea what that's doing, but this is giving you a nice visual feedback for how it's outputting. So you see the first bounce is at full power, so it jumped all the way at the top, and now it's going from the midpoint and then losing all its power, and it'll start jumping up again. Let's put that back up to full power. And, uh, yeah, actually, I think that will pretty much do it for this particular video. So I'll see you in the next one.